I remember being led out through the back of the Metropolitan Museum of Art so as not to generate embarrassment or create publicity after we took over Thomas Hoving's office. We had succeeded in countless demonstrations after wayfaring throughout New York City as art girls, advocating for programs in the museums that would relate to our communities and following the demonstration we called A Day Without Art in solidarity with the Kent State University Massacre. Our group, including Armando Soto, Adrian Garcia, Manuel Otero, and Marcus Dimas, founded El Taller Boricua, the Puerto Rican workshop in East Harlem, in 1969. As a gesture of solidarity and union, we adopted and personalized indigenous Taino symbols, which became insignias that symbolically linked us with our ancestral root culture from the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico. The Aborigine who had vanished from the face of Borinque and had resided in our souls, the spirit of freedom that had disappeared into a number of myths, folk tales, and anthropological theories. That mythical being was being resurrected at the corner of revolution and of change. Our first workshop space was located at the corner of 111th Street and Madison Avenue. It was a four-story building we inherited from the Real Great Society Incorporated. Across the street was the headquarters of the Young Lords Political Party. From this location, we started to exhibit in the streets, created and donated works for and to the community, and initiated educational programs. We moved to our second location, to 1638 Second Avenue. El Taller Boricua initiated a series of events, fostering appreciation for our culture and supporting our collaborators. Here we were drawing from spiritual and abstract concepts and from traditions such as the African and Native American as authentic forms that flourished without the benefit of European art history. Poster art maintained a strong stance and popularity in Puerto Rico from the period of the 1940s through the 1960s. By incorporating their talent to the service of social and educational advancement, artists fulfill the creative and collective nationalistic need. Poster art, graphic work and silk screen printmaking was used to announce festivals, plays, films, exhibitions, Working for the Division of Community Education, island artists also use the mediums for fine art work and for the service of political advocacy. Following in that tradition, from its inception, Taller Boricua has maintained a graphic printmaking workshop. The Taller's political cultural agenda was to realize itself primarily through its silkscreen and photography workshops, producing silkscreen posters and photographs for such political groups as El Comité and the Young Lords. The photographs were documents, political messages, and images speaking of power to the people. The silkscreen works were animated and energized in the expressionist tradition of the graphic art produced by the Mexican artists serving the Mexican Revolution. In 1969, the Taller Boricua joined the struggle of the underclass. The outcry was enough injustice. 
Enough Abuse. Viva Puerto Rico Libre. Viva la Comunidad Libre. Power to the People. outside the building where the artists are in preparation of a traveling exhibit. Six-foot portrait faces of Don Pedro Alviso Campos, paintings and drawings depicting heroic events in the revolutionary history of Puerto Rico and its struggle for independence circulated throughout the barrio. Homegrown and handmade mythologies are followed by images of Emeterio Betances San Rodrita Lebron and lurking in our shadows Cofresi, Agüeybaná, Guarionex, and many more icons that lived on the fringe of our political reality. We were evolving from colonial assimilation to a rebirth of identity, of a New Yorican identity. Once the vehicle is loaded, it's on its way, this time to the South Bronx community. We started with this premise, among many more ideas, to awake in our neighborhoods the love for their art and culture, and to develop social and artistic conscience. At the plaza, an outdoor exhibit unfolds to the fascination and curiosity of the community. Children play around the artwork and the people for the first time participate in an artistic experience. The event is charged with emotion, making art accessible to the people. Art as a tool for education. Art for all. El negrito bonito no encuentra trabajo Está dolondrado, se siente the Taller Boricua's commitment to heal the cultural wounds moved the form and the content of the art in three directions. In the service of social change, in the service of cultural heritage, and the most radical, the development of each artist of a personal style within the contemporary context. The group's concern was not to create a Puerto Rican aesthetic or style. The purpose was to bring to fruition a more radically social cultural intention. That as members of the underclass, we could make an uncompromising, intelligent, and originative contribution to the world of art. <laughs> The New York Puerto Rican aesthetic has developed in its own climate. It has been tempered by, among other things, the experience of living in a marginal society, 
of speaking a hybrid of both languages, each broken and not belonging completely with either. Our group, creating with non-traditional elements, produced what was called processed works, assemblages of recycled junk, transforming objects and cast-off items into icons. Significant in the processed work was the sequence of symbols, the relationships among objects, the reference to time and to the spiritual transformation. Each piece served as a talisman, a means to travel into the subconscious. The research revealed a metaphysics, the spirit of a thing or object or action speaks to one, giving it transcendental value beyond its original function or meaning. Carimbo marcado fue con un hierro candente, sí señor. Allí en los tiempos de la esclavitud, el negro carimbo marcado fue cuando su cuerpo lacerado fue. Carimbo gritaba así. Art was seen by the Taller Boricua artists as occurring in the present. By reconnecting with the past and by moving the high achievements of the root culture through our art and into our contemporary time and space. The final product of these rituals coexist along with the development of postmodernism and with the alternative art movement created in New York. Ay, soñando con dolores cuando vino una gente muy intransigentemente señalando con la macana si sí, porque le da la gana me dijo me dijo me dijo me dijo ay todo y me metí en un subway y un viejo medio loco quería que le diera un poco y vino roque el pele la si quería pelear y yo empecé a bailar a gogo, a gogo, a gogo, a gogo y ya nunca gritaba el boricueta en luz y yo embobinado dije feo, feo serás tú cuentan lo más que saben que la guerra es un negocio que la luna es un juguete para el rey del reguerete que con todos sus millones solo sabe hacer aviones y viene, y viene, y viene, y viene la doña de un gerente que al pedirle y un bellón grita mira comunita y un señor capitalista saca un billetito por un bacalao bien frito y yo empecé a bailar 